morning. We're going to start out this morning with the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, this morning, we're going to read from Psalm 23, the whole thing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, have you ever heard the... Uh, the saying, don't throw, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before, probably used it a lot of times, might not know what it means or where it comes from. But um, way back when, uh, baths were not a, a very common thing. We take for granted today, we you know got running water in the house and stuff like that, so we take a bath at least probably once a day. I know... Uh, our sons, they take baths two or three times a day sometimes. Depends on what's going on in the day. But uh, way back when, it didn't, it didn't work that way. The baths were, you know, few and far between. So when the family would take a bath, they would have a big wash tub. And they would fill it up with water. So and everybody used the same water. So the way it worked out is the, the pecking order for the bath was the oldest person got to take the bath first. And then they would work their way down to the youngest. So by the time they got ready to, they, they were going to give the baby a bath, the water was so dark and black and dirty uh, that when they would throw the bath water out, they would want to make sure that they, the baby wasn't stuck in there somewhere because the water was so filthy you couldn't see it. So that's where the phrase comes from, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So a lot of those things we've got, we just, you know, we kind of take them for granted uh, because you do them so much, you're saying them so much, you hear them all the time, right? All that kind of stuff. Well, with Psalm 23, it, it kind of can be that way because it, it's one of those psalms and one of those, those pieces of scripture that that everybody kind of hangs on to. I actually, I know, I actually have a uh, uh, a poster of it. It's a framed thing up in the office of the church. It's uh, the it's twenty third Psalm. A lot of people have twenty third Psalm laying around. Maybe some people can probably even recite it. So when you you know, and, and that's the thing. It, sometimes it becomes so familiar. We try to hang on to little pieces and parts of it that we like. Um, and we, we kind of carry that stuff around with us, like, oh, that's how it goes, right? So, and, and which is cool. I mean, it's, you know, don't think there's something wrong with it, but sometimes we need to get into a little bit deeper because that's why, um, you know, Scripture really, you know, if, if you really read the Scripture, it, Scripture will kind of rub on you a little bit because it, it's, it's kind of trying to polish you up a little bit. It's like sandpaper. So if you get into Psalm 23, it starts out with, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, one of the things that's kind of neat, it doesn't say the Lord is like a shepherd. It actually says the Lord is my shepherd. So that's kind of interesting. It's, it's saying that, that, that God is actually, you know, the one that's leading you around. So you got to kind of think about, okay, so what's a shepherd? What's a shepherd do, right? 
So if you think about like a shepherd of, uh, of sheep, right? So you've got the sheep and the shepherd is everything for them. The shepherd is the caretaker. The shepherd is the one who gives them food, water, protects them. Uh, the shepherd does everything for the sheep. So, uh, and the shepherd's always the one that's around. If the sheep needs something, the shepherd's there. If the sheep gets lost, the shepherd go gets it, right? Goes and gets the sheep. Now, the other thing that's neat about a shepherd is the shepherd has certain tools, right? Uh, think about uh, David, right? David and Goliath. When David was younger, he was a shepherd, right? That's, that's what David was. Um, and I think really at his heart, that's always what he was. But remember when he faced Goliath? He faced Goliath with a sling, with a slingshot and some rocks because that was, what he, that was some of the tools he used as a shepherd. Uh, shepherds have a, the, like in the in 23rd Psalm, it's talking about the, the, your, your rod and your staff that comfort me. Shepherds had a, you know, had a shepherd's crook. Think about it. You got this big stick, big curved thing on the end of the stick, right, where you can grab the sheep, right? And it's also a big, long thing, so you can fight animals off. You know, if coyotes come up, try to attack your sheep, you can stab them with it. So shepherds had certain tools that they used all the time, right? So that's and it's just part of what a shepherd does. Okay, so they're going to take care of the sheep and all this stuff. Now, another thing that it talks about, and, and if you think about it, you got all the sheep in the pen and everybody's happy, right? Shepherd lets them be. The sheep know who the shepherd is. Shepherd calls to them, they come running, right? Uh, but sometimes it's necessary for the sheep to move. They got to move to a different field or somewhere else. Right, so the shepherd's going to open the gate for him and let him out. So as the sheep go out, he'll he'll let them out and let the sheep come out, and they start off on their journey. Right now, the shepherd doesn't stand there and tell each sheep where to go and what to do. All that right? They they just kind of come out and they go on their own. Now. The, the shepherd, if, if you think about it, sheep, they just kind of go off and they, and they do their own thing, right? So if you're trying to get the sheep to go somewhere in a direction, you got to drive them that way. Now, I don't know if you've ever uh, like herded cattle or had to drive cattle or drive sheep or anything like that. But when you do, I remember growing up, the, we lived you know, next to a farm. And every now and then the cows would get out. They would get out of the field, they'd jump the fence or something like that. And there we you get up the next morning and there'd be cows in the yard. So we'd have to go get the cows back into the field and help them get your cows back. So when we did that, you don't go up in front of a cow and say, Come on, cow, let's follow me. The cow's not gonna follow you. So what you did is you got behind the cow and you herded them into back into the field, back through the gate, into the field where they belonged. So you had to kind of, you had to corral them from the back and you had to drive them a certain way. A shepherd's going to do the same thing with the sheep. And I think that's, that's one of the things in the 23rd Psalm that sometimes people forget about is that last line. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So if you think about it, What's, what actually is going on with this, with this good shepherd, which is the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, is when we need to be driven somewhere and we need to be on the move, the, the God is going to be behind us and driving us. So the way a shepherd would drive the sheep is the, he lets the sheep get out and start going. But in order to get them to go a certain way, he might have to prod some at the back with the stick Hey, keep going, keep moving. But then they've got the, you got the ones up front, right? If they start to get away from you and go the wrong way, he could take his slingshot, load a rock up in that thing. He was so good with the slingshot, he could throw a rock. So if the sheep were going off too far to the left, he could sling a rock out, pass them a little bit to the left. The rock would hit, it would scare them and pull them back to the right. So he could stand back and see what's going on with all the sheep and drive them in the way he needed that they needed to go to make sure they're safe. So, so it's an interesting thing. The sheep can actually go out 
and wander and do the things that they want to do. They're not try, tried to a, uh, you know, don't have a little shackle around their neck and you haul on a chain as you drag them through the stuff. No, the sheep that are, they can actually go whichever way they want to go, but the shepherd kind of keeps them in line. It's really kind of cool. So, it's like, okay, so you got this nice thing about all the sheep going on, but what's, you know, what's that got to do with me, right? All right, now think about it for a second. We're, it, God does not want, and he, he created us all. He knows every one of us. He knows you because he made you. Now, the thing he did not want when he made this beautiful creation is he didn't want a bunch of robots. He wanted people to be able to think and do things on their own. Right? So he gave us the power to choose. Power of choice. It's, a, it's an interesting thing that we've got. Something we kind of take for granted. But he lets us choose. So we can kind of go on off our own little, on our own volition and, and do what we think we're going to do to make things happen and all this stuff. So he lets us go do that. Great. Now, Every now and then, if, we, if we're trying to move a certain direction, right, and we're, we're going off on our own thing, and we're picking, choosing what we do, right, and especially right now, okay, we've got all this coronavirus stuff going on. So, and if you think about the 23rd Psalm, a lot of you might be thinking, well, you know, hey, I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. I think it's a, that's a lot, that's one that a lot of people go to. When they think 23rd Psalm, they think Valley of the Shadow of Death. It's kind of where they go. So people start looking around now and it's like, man, this is awful. I got to stay in. It's not getting better yet. It's you know, gotten you know, worse. And what's going on? And you always, you, know, you turn on the TV, on the news, it's, it's right there in front of you. They keep saying the same stuff. They keep coming out with more bad stuff that's going on. And, you know, California's shutting down or whatever else is what they're saying in the news. You get your iPhone out, and you know, it's on that. You know, it's everywhere. And you keep going and going and going. And so, sooner or later, if, you're not, if you don't pay attention, you find yourself on the crazy train, right? You get on that crazy train, and, you worry, and you're worried about everything that's going on. And then, then sometimes you're worrying about worrying. And if you're not worried enough, you're worrying about that, right? And so you got that thing going on. It's just going and going and going. And all this news media and everything else is not helping anything. Right? So he's like, this is the worst of the worst. I don't know if it's ever been this bad. The stock market's tanking, all the stuff's going on. Right? So if you somehow can slow that down and pay attention and listen for your shepherd, you got to pay attention to the shepherd because he will use his tools in order to corral us to go the right way. So instead of us getting caught up in all of our junk and the junk that other people want to put on us, listen to the shepherd. He's driving us. Right? We're not in some pleasant little field right now. So he's driving us somewhere that we need to go. So pay attention to the rocks that hit beside you. Maybe he's loading up his slingshot and he's trying to sling a rock out there somewhere so it hits and it kind of scares you and it puts you in the right place. Right? Look for things. Look for things that let you know that he's around. Like, think about this. I don't know if you realize this or not because there's so much going on. Spring happened just a couple of days ago. It's spring now. If you go outside, at least today here, and it was a pretty day. Birds are singing all over the place. We're trying to make sure birds don't build a nest in the garage so they don't get trapped. So there's birds out. We got outside. We did stuff. Planted some flowers. Dug up some flower beds and stuff. So cleaned up a little bit outside. Uh, it's, it's time to start mowing already. At least here it is. So there's little things that let you know that, hey, yeah, there's some stuff going on. But if we pay attention to what God will have us pay attention to, you can see that he's there. He's nudging us in ways that we should go. So it's, it's 
it's not something where we need to get so caught up in it that we lose track of where we really are and whose we belong to. So don't get so caught up in all the mess because bottom line, he's going to lead you in right paths for his namesake. And God will never let his name be tarnished. So there's nothing, there's nothing that we can do or nothing that he's going to let us do that's going to, to lead you in a wrong way. And everybody has their way. It's not that your way needs to be like somebody else's way. Whatever your way is, settle in. That's your way. So embrace it. But he is going to lead you in right paths for his name's sake. And then if you really pay attention, you'll notice that goodness and mercy is following you. And he will follow you all the days of your life. And you will be able to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Thank you, good Lord, for taking care of us. Please keep doing this each and every day. And let us be so aware of your presence around us that we can't help but know that you are there. Thank you so much for everything you do for us each and every day. And we love you for it. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.